We've got our coffee ready, and now we're heading off to see one of our friends. Hey y'all and welcome back and I am not in my garden today. I am with my very special flower friend named Kim and we are at her beautiful garden with Backyard Blooms by Kim. So I can't wait to take you on this little tour. We were hoping for a prettier day today but we're here in the rain and we're going to make it work and her garden is so beautiful so it won't even matter that it's raining. So Come along, guys, and Kim is going to take us on a tour of her backyard. All right, guys, so this is Kim with Backyard Blooms by Kim, Hello. and she is my flower friend. We met because um, we both did a video for Dig Plant Water Repeat for Janie's channel, and she's a Zone 8, and I'm a Zone 8, mm -hmm. and so we got together, and now we're flower friends, and mm -hmm. this is our first video together. We've done a collaboration video mm -hmm. together, and I'll link that down below. That was um, called The Art of Gardening. Yep. And now we're getting ready to do another collaboration where we're going to be talking about our garden dreams, our dream garden. So yeah. today we're at Kim's backyard and she's going to take us on a little tour and show you all the beautiful things that she has planted right now. Thanks, Kim. Come along. <laughs> so, Kim, can you tell us what this garden is over here? Does it have a name? This is my cottage garden. And I feel like there's just no rules to this cottage garden. But I do want a lot of color, mm -hmm. a lot of texture, and a lot of spiky things in it. So that's mm. what I'm trying to obtain in this garden. But, like, do you notice these great big um, yes. cryptomeria trees? Before, when they were small, I had nothing but full sun. Mm -hmm. Now they're providing some shade. So now I get shade part shade and full sun. Oh, that's nice. So I get to play around this year a little mm -hmm. bit more than where I did not get to do before. I love yeah. that. So and I'm planting is that still stuff. Um, like a cat mint? That's, that's Walker's Low. Walker's Nepeta. Low. Yes. That is one of the things that I want to plant this year in my cottage garden. So I'm very excited about that. So for me, I feel like, I don't know why, I just, excuse my language, suck <laughs> at growing uh, lavender mm -hmm. but this kind of gives me a replacement mm -hmm. like so when it's like beautiful and mm -hmm. those big kind of light purpley blooms the same as lavender like this kind of supplements and this does better in my garden i love that yeah, yeah i think because we're always so wet <laughs> and we're so our clay soil and everything right. makes it hard to grow the lavender yeah beautiful so i'm in the process of putting down some mulch and some compost mm -hmm. so you, i started in this area but I still have things to plant, some hellebores, and I got some, uh, oh, the bleeding lost heart. words, yeah, bleeding heart back there. So I still have a couple things that I need to plant, some hostas, and then I planted a few things last, yesterday. So still always, always work in progress. Yeah, that's So beautiful. it never has to be, feel like you has to be complete mm -hmm. to share your garden. Can we walk down to your little pot here right. and see what you've got planted? Were these your fall planters? Uh, yes, I planted that last, probably October. And these are called the Miss America, and then I have some ornamental kale, and then some ivy. You can see where the deer mm. ate my ivy right there, but not on that one. I didn't even notice that till days later. <laughs> well, that's good to know. I didn't know the deer eat the ivy, I too. I didn't either until, you know, the other day. Mm -hmm. And then I had some pansies, but they're just not doing great in this pot. My pansies didn't do well either. I got aphids really bad this year. I've never had aphids on my pansies. So what I I'm, did on the Miss America. Really? Yeah, that I had to spray for. What I'm really excited about is like, so I love all the purples and pinks. And my family always makes fun of me because that's all I want to do is purples and pinks. But I love how you've got like the little pops of orange and a little bright pink there. And right. it gives me a lot of inspiration too because I'm not as big on planting things that are spiky. And so it's good for my eye to see this, that it works. I think my brain thinks I just need to plant round. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay but you definitely need the right. spiky in there as well so the orange is uh, candy corn spirea okay. and i love it because it gives you so much different colors mm -hmm. throughout the year and it does look like candy corn right mm -hmm. so they named that really well and then that pink um kind of peachy mm -hmm. is an agastache oh and you've got a little label with it right. That's perfect. yes i'm trying to be better I love with that. that so i actually got a big thing of labels i think i bought a hundred labels so go ahead and mm -hmm. like Get you a big 
big yeah. thing of them and then that way go ahead and label a lot there's stuff that i need to come back like this one, I've got candy corn in front of it, mm -hmm. but I didn't label every single thing. Yeah, that's a really, right. really good idea. Maybe we could put a link down to the labels that okay. you use in your garden. Okay. So that's really cool. I just like copper because it looks, um, it still looks elegant, mm -hmm. you know. I love that. Right. And now is, um, is that called pinka blue? The one that's. It is. The yep. flower fell over on right. it. Right. I also want to get some of that too. I think that's really beautiful. That's called lungwort. lungwort. And actually I had this on my skinny side garden. And I had, I think, because I like to plant in sets of threes, mm -hmm. five, sevens. So I think I had three of them, but I split them at okay. least into half. Mm -hmm. And I have several now in this garden. But they already bloomed. They, they, oh, nice. they really transplanted really well. So they come out as a pink, and then mm -hmm. they change over to blue. Oh, that's and there's, a, there's, two, there's more varieties. There's one that's got more salmon color mm -hmm. than pink. So if you like the salmon better mm -hmm. than pink you can go with that too but and you, is it like more of the shade because you've got it, closer it likes to the tree? it like shade okay yes, yes. so awesome. it's kind of pairs well with the uh, hostas and a still mm -hmm. so yes either part shade or shade mm -hmm. yeah, yeah it would not like full sun and then i what i think is interesting too is sometimes i think about just all flowering plants in the cottage garden but i love how you've got are these like junipers in the back they are yes that's so and beautiful. the reason why i put those on that side because we're on a hill mm -hmm. i don't know why these new neighborhoods they always have like everything in like a stair step mm -hmm. if you notice it's like boop and then another big mm -hmm. boop so we always have like a big hill but i i did not want this side to erode mm -hmm. of course i never thought when i planted this five years ago that i'd have a youtube mm -hmm. never ever thought i'd ever do youtube right to begin with so that's like out of my comfort zone but that was to prevent ro erosion. Uh, erosion over there. But it adds such a nice right. texture yeah. and it adds that evergreen interest to your garden. I'm sure that was really pretty this yeah. winter. I have two different junipers in there too. One is more of a golden mm -hmm. juniper. You can probably see it on the edge over there. It kind of mixes in. But in the summertime, it's more golden oh, color. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. So there's two types of junipers. And I wanted to make sure that I got a dwarf one because mm -hmm. I didn't, they, they can really they get really out did. of control, I think, mm -hmm. too. So, And all your bulbs are so pretty. Everything's popping up so nicely. They have hyacinths. And then this um, blend right here is called uh, Silly Blend from Color Blends. I don't know if you ever bought any mm -hmm. bulbs from them, but I really highly recommend. And it's so neat how you kind of did it in like this a little drift, drift. going mm -hmm. down. It right. almost makes you think of like a little river flowing, but just of oh, yellow yeah. and yellow and white right. that's beautiful never thought of a river but yes <laughs> i like that term can you take us over to your rose garden yes okay <laughs> what is this garden area that you have here so this is my formal rose garden and i love the english rose mm -hmm. so all my roses are from david austin and you can order those off the david austin website but they're all shades of pink so mm -hmm. when i when i designed this garden i wanted all hot pink but mm -hmm. i did not want to limit myself to one certain rose mm -hmm. which i think it would have been beautiful mm -hmm. actually to have like all but one rose mm -hmm. in here but so i settled on four different um hot pink roses so i have boscobel in this mm -hmm. corner and then that corner over there is alexandra of kent and then that corner over there is Eustigia of and then this corner right here is called gabrielle oak oh nice yeah so all shades of hot pink now the Eustigia Ive is a lighter pink and Bosca Bell has some coral color to mm -hmm. it but mind you I feel like you know sometimes our garden has our own mind right mm -hmm, it does so I feel like the soil is mm -hmm. not maybe I think they're more of a lighter color mm -hmm. and not as vibrant and of course we do get like hotter summers too right so I think roses like those cool nights mm -hmm. which we don't get so sometimes I think that affects the shade of the yeah. rose. I but I still that. love that. I just that. got in three Do David Austins this mm -hmm. week. So um, I'm very excited. And one of them is the climber. So you may have to show me some of your chalices. Yeah. I, have a, <laughs> I have a climber behind me. Yes. And then I have a climber that I just bought on this arbor over here. Oh, beautiful. So if you want to come over here. Yes. Okay, so right here we're in the backyard of Kim's house. And she has the same problem that I have, lots and lots yep. of deer. So she is going to show you what she did to helpfully, hopefully prevent loss of her plants from these little munchy deer. Before I, I get started, like I have tried everything. Mm -hmm. I've tried Morganite, which I think does work for about three or four months or not three, three, about a month or three, mm -hmm. three or four weeks is what I was going to say. 
and then but you had to keep reapplying it mm -hmm. now these deer like to come in my garden when we just like today like mm -hmm. when there's a big soaking wet where the deer deterrent doesn't work because mm -hmm. it's already gotten soaked well anyways they came up and ate my tulips and they ate my rinoculuses that i've been like Aww. babying for two months in my raised garden like they actually got their whole hoof in there oh my god like just jumped in it like yum 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 so anyways this was my this was my idea and my husband just played along with it <laughs> so i have an arbor just like this mm -hmm. coming down my skinny side garden and he needed a way to go in and out with his lawnmower mm -hmm. so i had to have something because he can't be con taking down these posts and everything like right. on a daily weekly basis whenever he mm -hmm. mows so anyways i bought this arbor the same one and i got this from wilson's and then you can just he can just guys. where you can come in and out okay and then so i i did ask permission from my neighbor al to tie off onto his fence now so far i have not ever seen the deer jump into his fence mm -hmm. but i know they can right so that really may not be like an absolute solution either so anyways what i did was i have a layer that's 12 or 13 inches or so, uh, you know, from the ground. And then one that's kind of like at my waist, between my knee and waist, and then one like right at my shoulder level. That way, if you get a fawn mm -hmm. that's something small, they'll hit the lower one. But then I might even have to put more rows, mm -hmm. maybe to three, do five. But this is just a 30, 30 pound wire mm -hmm. and they can't see it. So whenever they come and try to enter into the garden, they're gonna be like, oh, What's in my face? Mm -hmm. I don't like it. So hopefully it will deter them. Could they break it? Yeah. Yeah. They, they could break it. Mm -hmm. But hopefully they won't be that aggressive. Right. I heard that they like the least resistance. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. And it might scare them enough to stay away. I don't yeah. Know. So I love this though. Yeah. I'm definitely going to try this in our front yeah. flower bed. Right. It has worked for my mm -hmm. neighbor Dawn for a whole year. It's worked for her. But now you can see, like, I may need to go with the bigger post mm -hmm. but you can see it's kind of i don't know if the water made this sag but i'm gonna have to come back and fix it so it's something that i'm gonna have to probably keep an eye on mm -hmm. but like this one down here i don't know if a deer tried to come through this or it just fell down mm -hmm. i don't know or maybe a squirrel jumped on it yeah but i'm gonna i gotta come back and fix this one and so these too. were all your ranunculus that they yes. ate oh my so goodness. they ate some of them they pulled some of them up but then, like, I tried to replant them. Aww. And I don't know. I'll be super happy if I get some blooms from them. Like, I love that bloom. I know. It's gorgeous. Like, it's so I'll see them at the store, and I'm like, oh, maybe I should just cheat and buy mm -hmm. some. But I was wanting to do it to see if I can grow for my cut flyer, right. you know, idea that I have in mind. So, I'm, like, I'm playing around this year, though, yeah. Betty. Like, I'm just seeing what I can do. I heard rinoculuses don't even like, like, our hot climate so mm -hmm. you have to get them out early right because once it gets in the 80s they will not bloom mm -hmm. so i'm playing around like i don't know they might not even do good in my area yeah. at all and that's what we have to do as gardeners yeah. we just have to keep playing around and yeah, see what you works. learn like mm -hmm. you learn i learn from others and mm -hmm. then you get most of the time you learn the best just yeah. by doing it yourself and failing or succeeding yeah. like whatever comes first be a student of your garden <laughs> <Hopefully it's> succeeding <laughs> can you take us now to where you've got your hydrangea hedge yes I'm so excited because I just did this. So <laughs> I'm excited to see what this is going to look like. That was my tulip experiment, Betty. I love it. So those right there. That's a good experiment. <laughs> yeah, those right there, because we are, let me just back, I have to lift it up. You know that we're in the south it doesn't mm -hmm. get cold enough for our zone mm -hmm. that's why tulips we kind of have to treat as an annual right now i pulled these all up by by the bulb mm -hmm. let them i set them out into the hot sun and let everything die back because mm -hmm. that's how your bulbs get new energy mm -hmm. we don't want to cut them off right for new, new people that are out there you don't it's you don't like to look at that old foliage and i get it but if you cut it back too too much then it won't read put enough energy to rebloom again for the following year and okay. that goes for any kind of bulb mm -hmm. like daffodils or anything but anyways so then once they die back I cut all the old foliage back stuck them in like a big paper bag mm -hmm. put them in my black cabinet where it's mm. completely dark and I just store it on there oh, like wow. the whole 
summer. Mm -hmm. And then I got them back out in October, put them back in the refridge, refrigerator and chilled them because we had to chill mm -hmm. our bulbs here in the South. Every tulip that you see here, I had to chill. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have room enough to chill them, like they'll chill them for you and then send them to you. Right. So that's something that you can think about too. But anyways, then I chilled them for eight to 10 weeks, replanted them here just to see like if I can get mm -hmm. them to bloom again. Cause sometimes you'll just get foliage and not right. a bloom. And they did fair. Like I'm pretty happy with it. Yeah. I don't know if, if it's worth it to me to do that year after year mm -hmm. after year, but it worked. It so was a neat experience. It's beautiful. If someone's on a budget and mm -hmm. they can't afford to keep doing that, like you might get enough blooms, mm -hmm. you know, for the second, yeah. second if year you've by got doing a, that. A neighbor that's throwing them out. Yeah. Say, hey, can I have your old tulips yeah. and play I around mean, with them? I don't feel like this is as showy as what I've got out front. Right. But mm -hmm. it worked. So. Beautiful. That was a great experiment. I love that. You all see all my little winter gardening stuff. Oh, my stuff goodness. Too. You've got some things getting big in there. Yeah. That one looks like a jungle. <laughs> Start to rain again. That's called, oh, that's my Pro Cut sunflowers. Beautiful. Dang it. I oh, know. <laughs> So this is very exciting for me because in my new cottage garden, we have planted a row of the Arborvitae uh, along our fence line, just like this. We used one that's called Tall Guy. It's mm -hmm. from first edition. And so it doesn't get as wide. It gets more tall. And then we planted the row of seven Incredibles okay. in between each one. So can you tell us about yours? Yes. Okay. So I wanted a screening. Mm -hmm. So I used my Emerald Green Arborvitaes. <laughs> and and um instead and these get about 12 to 13 feet tall and three feet wide okay so i've got like maybe eight here and seven down there mm -hmm. i did have like eight and eight but some of them died so yeah. this is what i ended up with and then um my little lime hydrangeas are in front of those and then i tried for the ground cover i'm i have lemon coral seed on Love and that. then um so that's not doing as good because it likes full sun. Mm -hmm. So last year I planted several of the Roxanne geraniums. Mm -hmm. And those were nice because they came up all the way up th through the limelight hydrangeas and gave you a little bit different surprise. So I that was nice. That. And then this year I think I'm going to, I want to try the Bordeaux mm -hmm. and do Bordeaux all down. Oh, I might get like two pretty. flats. So you have the green and then the limelight light, and, and then, then that light purple. purple. That would yeah. be really pretty. So I'm going to try that. I love that. I've tried the jazz. I had jazzberry in here last year, and that jazzberry is a good workhorse. Mm -hmm. Like, I think, I think honestly, jazzberry does better than the um, bubble gum. Oh, really? Yes. Wow. My bubble gum didn't do very good last year. I was mm. so disappointed. Our bubble gum did really good. Yeah. Now, <laughs> bubble gum and the jazzberry, the super petunias, like bubble gum and jazzberry, sometimes they'll come up again for you. Oh, okay. So don't pull them up just quite yet mm -hmm. until you start seeing some green because I think, like, right here, yeah. this. This jazzberry right here, you can start, that's yeah. starting to come back up again. I guess we're warm enough. Yeah. That's so it's awesome. kind of like, we, it's kind of, some, some annuals can be perennials for us. We have this sedum and it's like self-seeded itself everywhere in my front yard, oh, nice. in my front flower yeah. bed. Yes. Yeah. And I was like, how did it get there? Because there was not a pot near there, but it just, it just yeah. got there however it, does, it wanted It to. propagates really mm -hmm. easy. It does. So, yeah. Uh, can we go around to your your side i guess is this is called your side garden i call or? this my um skinny side garden skinny side garden okay <laughs> <laughs> oh your side your sidewalk is so nice this arbor right here these are the newly climbing roses right here oh okay and so they're called the pilgrim and they're a yellow david austin climbing rose and i got one on this side and one on that side so if i wanted to do like a clematis on here and here then mm -hmm. i could do that that would be perfect. Yeah. I love that. Honeysuckle would be pretty too, climbing. Mm -hmm. This is my little pot with my little Honoki cypress, I mm -hmm. believe. I think I call it my um, little whimsical Dr. Seuss tree. It looks like a Dr. Seuss. And I love the, fo the feel of it. It's so pretty. I and love it, stuff that you, has a good feel to it. like the little, little yellow yeah. tips on right. it. Mm -hmm. I love that. <laughs> lamb's ear. Mm -hmm. I don't have any in my garden, but I like to fill that too. <laughs> I just got some lamb's ear, so Did I'm you? excited about that. Look at these tulips. Oh my goodness. 
What side of the house is, are we on? Like the east side. East side, okay. Gorgeous. Yes, I have my wheelbarrow out. And yes, my husband slapped my hand. <laughs> so I have it. I had it out because I, I have all this um, mulch and stuff that I'm going to put out. But beautiful. And work on a little bit at a time. Camellia is right. That's white by the gate. White by the gate. It's in full bloom. Beautiful. This rain. Oh my I goodness. I know it's like coming in like little dress. <laughs> Oh, it's supposed to stop by 12. I know. Maybe we can walk up here to your front porch. This is so gorgeous, though. Look at that. They just look like sunshine and happiness. Those are called three kings. Three kings. Yeah. Gorgeous. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Kim, you're <laughs> such a trooper. <laughs> Kim will do anything for you. <laughs> Here on Kim's front porch, and it's still beautiful even in the winter. Um, when me and Mary were driving in, um, me and my daughter, we were like, "Which house is it?" And then, if Mary can turn around and show you, I said, "It's probably the one with the flowers <laughs> because nobody else has right. flowers." <laughs> and it was, it was the one with the flowers. And so she has a beautiful display here. And when I saw this in your videos, I was like, "I want one of these." This. That came three from tiers. Kinsman. It's beautiful. Yeah, three tier from Kinsman. They, it's a little wonky, a little sideways, mm -hmm. and uh, that's because I put it together. <laughs> and then um, after when I put my summer annuals, I'm going to remove all of it mm -hmm. and then let my husband work on it where it's straight. It's not crooked though. But I so. can just imagine like having the bubble gum or the jazzberry and it just kind of spilling out. Yeah. Gorgeous. I did the uh, sun impatience. This past year and they were gorgeous mm -hmm. so i think i'm gonna have to do it again oh, they were so that. pretty and they did good like up there on this porch mm -hmm. because sometimes in the summertime i get more sun up here in this area mm -hmm. like right now i'm not getting as much but it's enough for for this to thrive yeah so but i think i'm gonna do the sun and patience still it's beautiful yeah. and then i love how she's got all her like little violas and pansies and and this I don't know what that is. That corkscrew. It's like a corkscrew grass. Don't you I love it? Love that it looks like a corkscrew. It does. And that has wintered over and it just keeps getting prettier. It's beautiful. Well, so I'm gonna, I'll keep that in there. It's another Willy Wonka thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's very pretty. So I've got three in those. Got oh, one here beautiful. and then two there. This pot's a little bit smaller, so I always just mm -hmm. try to keep it more simple. Gorgeous. You can just sit out here and enjoy all your beautiful yeah. flowers. Now, of course, all these tulips here in the front, they're going to be the exact same as the blend that's around my tree. Okay. They just have not gotten as much sun mm -hmm. because of the way the sun comes over my house in the winter time. Mm -hmm. So they're, I kind of like it because i got blooms on the east side, mm -hmm. west side, and then, you know, out here in front of the trees. And then when they're all gone, these are going to be blooming. Yeah, so, that's going to be pretty. Yeah. And then the purple pansies and stuff right. in the front yeah very good color I kinda, combination i kind of hate it because i love the pansies but then i like to get my annuals in at a good time so mm -hmm. they can start to grow too before it gets really hot yeah because it just turns like instantly hot. like sometimes we don't even have a spring mm -hmm. but so after my frost date which is april 5th then i'm going to pull all those out mm -hmm. and then put my annuals in there okay yeah. so y'all have to tune in to kim's channel to see what she's going to do for this year because she always does like something different every year. Yeah. It's like a theme, you know. <laughs> yeah, I like to do different each yeah. year. It's boring to do the same yeah. thing. She keeps you on your toes. Right. <laughs> so this house, I this year I became the pink house lady. So because we had all the Supertunia Vista bubble gums out there. So I guess we'll have to figure out what house color I'm going to be this year. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. And then the only thing that we didn't check out is the side. So Mary, if you want to just kind of peek over there. Yes. She'll do a little peek through since now it is. Now it's going to stop it again. Keeps starting and stopping. It's like a hurricane. So this right here, this trellis came from Gardener Supply. I know you have a link to Gardener Supply I too, do. right? Yes, that's beautiful. And then um, that rose is a climber rose, and it's called, I always forget. Hang on. Focus. Okay. <laughs> Let me look at my handy little plant tag. <laughs> Peter, helpful to have. 
This one, no, that's the Happy Jack Clematis that's right here. And this one is called Shropshire Lad. Okay. It's named after some place in. I can probably find a picture UK. of it and yes. put it up on the screen. Shropshire Lad and then my Happy Jack. And those two combinations, like if you have a pairing that you like want to love, mm -hmm. I love a climbing rose and with the clematis and just make oh. sure they complement each other. Because mm -hmm. the Shropshire um, rose is like a real pretty light pinky peach and it smells so good. Mm. It's got like a lemony type smell to it. Mm -hmm. And then my Happy Jack is uh, like a dark pink, uh, oh. dark purple color. Oh, that is so that pretty. purple with that light pink color mm -hmm. complements each other. Oh yeah, so that pretty. sounds beautiful. Actually, um, I researched, I actually went on Pinterest mm -hmm. and um, different combinations of roses and climbing um, clematis and yeah. I actually got that idea off I didn't even Pinterest. think about looking there. <laughs> and then um, I actually like found out like where I could purchase both of those. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. So that's I, how I ended up with that. Your beautiful too. They look like they're just in a little bouquet. When they came out first, I was like, oh, these things are going to not going to stay so short. Mm -hmm. They were like all the way to the ground when mm -hmm. they were budding out. And now they're finally getting a little bit taller. Beautiful. But the, the tulips, you'll have to plant fresh every year because yes. of, we don't get cold enough. Right. Okay. Yes. yes. And then you have the walkers low mint through here. Um, um, cat mint. This this smaller stuff right here is uh, the cat's pajamas. Okay. And, and then the bigger one is cat's meow. Cat's meow. Okay. Yeah, it gets a little bit bigger than the cat's pajamas. Okay. That's but I don't know. I'm surprised these are still so small, but they're mm -hmm. they're just now starting to come up. I think they'll fill out when the sun starts hitting them. Beautiful. And then I have three David Austin roses here. I got Olivia and Olivia, and then the middle I have Celebration rose, and then Rose of Sharon back there. That thing that's got green on it mm -hmm. is a volunteer. I was going to leave oh. it to see what it did, but mm -hmm. I'm just going to pull it out. Yeah. I'm going to, I decided to pull it out. And then these little lollipop things are called Nellie Stevens, mm. which normally look, would look like a Christmas tree. Mm -hmm. But I have took all the lower branches off mm -hmm. of them and just made them into a little ball. Oh, they are so cute. Yeah. I like that little bit of whimsy too, because you've got the, floral, yeah. the formal of the rays, but then you've got the little whimsy of the little lollipops. Yeah. Very cute. And I, I like, you that. can see I like symmetric. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't, I, I don't know. Like, I just, that I'm not like OCD or mm -hmm. anything. I don't feel like I am. Sometimes symmetric is just easier but in I our just, mind. I think <laughs> it's easy on the eyes. Mm -hmm. So I got two here, two on the other side. And then this middle garden here is all symmetric to the length of my garden here. I too. love that. So Very pretty. The length back here is 111 feet. And then... From my house back 70 feet. Mm, beautiful. So, yeah. And are those a type of holly there? That is the Oakland holly. Beautiful. Now, if anybody's looking for a, sc a screening mm -hmm. like plant or screening tree, I think these would make a great mm -hmm. screening. Like, I can see nothing but a hedge of this. That would be cool. Like, if you wanted to replace, if you don't like an arborvite, arborvite mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't like that look, then I think a whole hedge of these. Uh, Oakland hollies would be really pretty. They pretty much keep their shape. Mm -hmm. I, every now and then they'll get like a wild hair and I had to mm -hmm. trim that off. I love them. Um, one of them had chlorosis and I mm -hmm. had to put the um, iron tone down. Mm -hmm. But it was so funny, Betty, because you can see like as as it was like absorbing into mm -hmm. the tree, it was like green down here and it had green, green, green. And it slowly it took, it turned back green. Yes, it took about a year. So then you know this year to make sure you add a little extra iron. Yeah, to well, that it. one should be a lot of iron Beautiful. on that one because I kept on adding it. But and I don't know why that one particular tree did that. I don't know. It's neat though because it's like your garden is so green right now and we're still in the middle of winter. We haven't had spring yet. But it's making me see like the things I need to add to my garden to right. add that more green interest for yeah. the winter because it's been so blah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This time of the year, it's starting to really rain. I know it is. <laughs> Poor Mary. Um, this, this is a great time to like mm -hmm. reassess and like, do I have enough winter interest? Do I have, and then do I have enough spring? So I like to go to the garden centers almost mm -hmm. every single month to see what's blooming or mm -hmm. see what's in. And then that way, you know, that you'll got 12 months of interest. Yes, yeah. exactly. Right. Well, I don't know with it raining so so much, we might want to wrap up our okay. <laughs> our garden tour, but it's been definitely beautiful. And maybe we can just get some shots around your garden right. kind of show at the end. 
But um, thank you guys for joining us today. And thank you, Kim, You're so welcome. much You're welcome. for having me to come. My glasses and, are um, all <laughs> spotted with uh, rain. Me, me and Kim, we also just did a video on um, about having your own small business and the ways small businesses can save you on your taxes. So I'll make sure to link her video down below so you can watch our interview because it's very interesting. And at the end, at the end of the video, she shares some interesting facts about how much she actually made being a YouTube content creator, right. which is very yeah. interesting for me since I'm just brand new. Right. So yeah. thank you guys for joining us today. We look forward to having you again. Bye friends. Bye, friends. <laughs>